Well, Paul Chan, thank you for talking to us today. Mm. I'm quite interested. Just tell us a little bit about your company and your startup. Uh, we found this company um, called Walk in Hong Kong in August 2013. Uh, so this is about two years. Mm. Um, we run walking tours and our mission is very simple. We want to bring out the most authentic, entertaining and best Hong Kong experience to foreigners and uh, local alike. So we run walking tours, uh, cultural programs and customised um, itineraries for um, Hong Kong locals, um, corporations, uh, universities and also visitors. Okay, so what is unique about Walk in Hong Kong? What can, what can you offer that other tour companies can't offer? Uh, we pay due attention and emphasis on the humanity side um, and that's the, that we believe uh, should be the best part uh, of Hong Kong that we should bring it out. So we uh, focus on the knowledge, uh, we gather the stories, uh, we really dig into the history of um, different areas and themes. Uh, we talk to locals and in our itinerary, we try to pack everything um, like in a very uh, compact, uh, very uh, compact manner so that you will enjoy very surprising experience. Uh, you'll get in touch with locals, uh, visit some old stores and uh, um, we learn some new perspective, uh, perspective in understanding and contextualizing Hong Kong. Now it's walk in Hong Kong, so yeah. this sounds very environmentally friendly. Yeah. <laughs> and does this give you access that other tours might not get to see Hong yeah. Kong? Yeah, because we, uh, we uh, emphasize on patience. If you want to understand the place, then you have to be patient. Uh, you can't, like bus tour can hardly do so. Uh, you need to build up the connection with the, com with the community. And by walking, we can appreciate uh, on a leisurely pace about the surrounding, the cityscapes, and also get the time, get the precious time to really talk to people. For example, the um, owners of some uh, old shops, um, the, some artisans, um, the people, the old master of some artisan skills. And, uh, and only by walking that you can, you can fully um, enjoy the time. So you can go down into an alleyway and have yeah. that access. But I imagine this means that you can't have a great number of people. So how many, what would be your ideal amount of people that would go on a walking tour? Well, now the optimum I would, uh, I believe would be about like 15 to 20. Uh, we won't want to stretch it further because it will, um, will compromise the, uh, the interaction and the quality. Yeah. But Could that means that this, like the scale you can't, uh, it's not a mass tourism, you can't cater 40. Uh, 50 people in a large group and then like like a ship that hurt the ship yeah. <laughs> it's hardly it's hardly like, like this so in terms of profitability how is the company going so far uh, for sure if you compare to mass tourism then the um, it's not as profitable um, it's not as attractive in terms of business but uh, we also, we also uh, want to emphasize on the social value that we can do something better and greater by, uh, by, aut by alternative form of uh, tourism uh, way of business. But what is your goal? How much do you want to grow this? Because I imagine you could have a number of walking tours mm. concurrently. Is it, would that be a, a goal? Uh, we we emphasize on small group, but then you can increase the numbers of the of the tours. Uh, if more people get attracted and find it uh, find it fascinating, then we believe that the market we can expand the market so that we can uh, increase the number of tours. Uh, and and secondly and secondly, um, we want to build a like a bigger team to explore different parts of Hong Kong and work on different uh, themes so that we have a wide range of uh, itineraries in our infantry. Right now we have about uh, 15 to 20 itinerary and we want to uh, put more and more gradually. Now did you have to get some sort of licensing or regulation in place so that you can um, not only start up this but advertise this and spread the message and market your company? Yeah, you need to uh, obtain a travel agent's license in, in Hong Kong and you also need to get your guide uh, license by taking the, the exam, which is quite um, quite a threshold for people who want to enter into this, into this field. But we believe that if we want to do it uh, in a proper way and want to scale it up, then this is the obstacle, this is the hurdle that you have to overcome. And therefore we uh, do all the painful job you know, of, um, of application and got our license uh, last year 
and therefore it really helps us in advertising and, and in striking new collaborations. For example, uh, we partner with uh, Hong Kong Tourism Board in promoting one uh, unique tourism uh, product uh, and, and itinerary that start in the evening um, in the coming in the coming July. Yeah. Oh, okay, that sounds that sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. So now you've had an interesting background. Tell us a little bit more about that. I believe. You had a legal background mm, yeah. originally, so yeah. right now I work. Right now I work in tourism, but like for for all my past previous uh, time, I have never been into tourism. I am a um, effort traveler. I've been to about eighty five country in the world. I, I'm just just crazy about travel. Uh, but in terms of career, I've never touched. At tourism. So I started, I, I'm trained in, in law and politics, but uh, teach a legal career, uh, work in academia, uh, think tank policy research, and uh, partially involved in media, and spent four years in the government. So basically, uh, like a music, cha uh, music chairs, uh, yeah. walk around, and finally uh, decide to make the leap and turn, ourself, turn myself into an entrepreneur. Hmm. But you're currently working in finance yeah. as well. Yes. Okay. And do your friends there think you're crazy? Stay in finance and, and earn this big salary, or what? What, what, what do you say? To uh, they will have some reservation for for sure. But if they know what I have gone through in, in the past decade, then it's not really not not that really hard to to uh, to, to understand. And indeed, they they do appreciate um, the courage and uh, uh, willingness to work on something um, like, like pursuing uh, your dreams. And of course, you, ha you have some family responsibility. You ne need to commit to your families, um, your parents, that uh, you should be doing all right yeah. before really making the full leap. But as you said, you've got that passion mm. with travel before. Yeah. So you're bringing that in to what your business is. Mm. How important is that? Having that passion about what your focus, of the focus of your business is. Uh, I, I would say, uh, I would say in three dimensions. First, you need to you need to be truly passionate about about this, and therefore you are willing to make all the sacrifice to do so. Uh, and and secondly, you need to uh, find the right time, like like what's, uh, and believe that um, what you are doing is not only to fulfill your passion, but you are doing something of value. Uh, either you change the ecology or you bring something new, something innovative, uh, something that has been ignored uh, in, in the market. But thirdly, and um, my recent realization is that you also need to work out the, the business model. Um, you need to be so down to earth to understand like you, you, you think that something is good, then how you can work it out, how you can make it survive in the market, and how to, like in terms of corporate governance, how you can build up a team, build up the mechanic, like a me mechanism, so that it can become long lasting. So this is like three important components, I would say, in, uh, in considering whether you want to be a full-time entre entrepreneur. Fantastic. On that note, thank you very much, Paul Chan. Okay, Thanks. thank you very much.